Hey you, yes you, you want to know how to play the Magicka Templar? You want a build that has been tested and proven capable of all content in the game? Look no farther, because today you found that build. This build can solo any and all soloable content. It can solo group content. This build will do it all. The last version of this build is at 150,000 views and counting. It's got thousands of upvotes and hundreds of comments like, this build is amazing, I'm not even using the recommended gear, and I'm already able to solo world bosses. Thank you for the build, it got me my first VMA clear. I don't have to do that ever again. Love this and the written guide. Oh yeah, that reminds me, don't forget, I make a complete, easy to follow written guide for you to use as you put this build together. It shows you the gear you need and how to get the gear. It shows you which skills you need and how to get those skills and where they can be found. And of course, your champion points, it explains those too. The link can be found in the description of this video down below. The same site has written guides for every class with YouTube videos to accompany them, so feel free to browse around. Now that you know this video is in fact worth your time, let's talk about the build. Everyone's damage went up this patch and the Templar was no exception. Zoss has continued its push to allow Magicka characters to use stamina skills and gear, allowing us to make this build the strongest it's ever been. While I talk about the build and explain it to you, I'm going to put some footage on the screen of me doing large AoE pulls and running veteran Vodatron Hollow, so you can get a sense of how this build performs in veteran content as well as normal content. Anything that you want to do, it's going to be able to do it, and it's going to be able to do it easier than almost any other class. This build is not going to require trial gear. It's very easy to get and very easy to use gear, which further adds to how insanely easy this build is. You can run this build as one bar or two bar. It's up to you. Let's jump in. As always, there will be a link to the build in the description below in case you want to refer to the written guide and then just listen to this build guide as you're actually playing the game, as there will be a lot of information for you to absorb. But by the time this this build is over, you will have mastered the Magic of Templar. You'll know the ins and outs of this class, the way that the passives complement the skills, and the way this gear is going to impact your character. In other words, you'll know everything you need to know. So in this video, I'm going to cover race, mundus, attributes, consumables, gear, skills, rotation, passives, champion points, and more. Let's jump into it. As for the race, the recommended choices right now are going to be the High Elf, the Dark Elf, the Khajiit, and the Breton. The Breton is going to be your go-to choice for better sustain, while the High Elf and the Dark Elf are going to be your go-to choices for damage right now. The Mundus you're going to use is Thief. Thief is going to increase your critical chance. As for your attributes, we're going to put all 64 points into Magicka. The reason we do this is because your character's damage is directly tied to the size of their resource pool. The more Magicka you have, the more damage every one of your spells does. It's in the formula for damage in this game, and so we're absolutely going to take advantage of that. As for the consumables, you're going to go ahead and use Essence of Magicka. Essence of Magicka is going to restore Magicka and increase your Magicka regeneration by 30%. These drop off mobs in the game, and you can also pick them up at Guild Traders. They're very cheap and very easy to use, and you should absolutely be spamming these things anytime you're in combat. This is going to greatly improve your sustain. In other words, this is going to make it so you don't run out of magic all the time. Now, whenever you're doing difficult content, something like a veteran solo arena, or maybe trying to solo a world boss for the first time, or maybe doing veteran DLC content, you know, anything that you feel like is going to be difficult, you want every ounce of power you can get. That's when you're going to switch over to essence of spell power. This is going to grant major sorcery, increasing your spell damage by 20%, major prophecy, increasing your spell critical chance, and it's going to restore magicka while giving you 30% increased mag regen. In other words, these things turn your character into an absolute beast. However, they are very, very expensive. So only use them when you need them, but absolutely use them when you need them. They make a huge difference. As for our food, we're going to go ahead and use Witch Mother's Potent Brew. Witch Mother's Potent Brew is going to give you a little bit of health, a little bit of magicka, while also giving you some magicka recovery. It's great for padding your health, increasing your mag pool, and increasing your sustain all in one. Another great thing about this food is you can use it starting at level one. There's a lot of food in this game where you can't do that, so this is pretty convenient when making a new character. Now, that's not to say that it's any worse than the foods that you can only use after 160, because it's not. As for the gear, on the jewelry and weapons, we're going to be using Deadly. Deadly is a fantastic set for the Templar. It used to be a set only the Stamina Templars could wear, but with recent changes to the game and how gear works, well, now it's a great set for Magplars too. The great thing about Deadly is that it's an always on buff. You don't have to worry about having a perfect light attack ratio. You don't have to worry about proccing some condition or getting your magic low to get the buff. It's just always there. 
and it's a massive buff to this character. It's going to increase the damage of our sweeps, which is our spammable. It's also going to increase the damage of our execute. So this is the perfect set for the Templar. And now we get to use it on our Magplar. And it feels so good on this character. You can see it in the video that's playing, my character is absolutely deleting these bosses with absolutely no trouble whatsoever. And that's veteran content. We're going to pair with the Deadly a set called War Maiden. War Maiden is an Overland set. It's really easy to get and really easy to use. Again, this is an always on buff. You don't have to worry about perfect light attack weaving. You don't have to go into a trial to get it. It's just always there. The Magplar is the king of simplicity without sacrificing an ounce of power. You're going to be so powerful with this build and it's going to be so easy and so intuitive. I had an absolute blast putting this one together this time and then testing it out to make sure it was still running really well this patch and it blew me away yet again. When you're running solo, you're going to use a Ring of Pell Order on one of your ring fingers and you're going to run One Piece Slime Craw for the extra crit chance. On the back bar, you're going to use the Maelstrom Staff. The Maelstrom Staff is going to increase your light attack damage. And it is worth noting that we are using Deadly Daggers for the increased crit chance. Since our spammable is melee anyway, sweeps, why not use Deadly Daggers as well to increase our crit chance and our damage output. As for the skills, you can run this as a one bar or two bar setup. If, if you want to use only the front bar, you can. Most of your damage is coming from the front bar. There's a little bit of sustain that's happening on the back bar. You're getting things like channel focus. and But if you spend all your time on the front bar and you kill everything with everything on the front bar, you will be more than fine to do so. And then once you're comfortable with these skills on the front bar, you can start working on dipping into the back bar skills when you're ready. Two bar builds will always be more powerful than one bar builds, but the Magicka Templar does a better job than most of succeeding as a one bar build. All right, next up, let's talk about the skills. The first skill on the front bar is going to be Radiant Ward. This is going to be your shield. This is the ability that you're going to cast anytime you need to buy yourself a little bit of time. If you're taking damage and for some reason you're unable to dish any damage out, you're going to be able to use Radiant Ward to protect yourself. The second you start doing damage to your enemies, your life is going to go back up to full. So this is really to use in the in-between, maybe when you're running from one mob and closing the gap on another, or maybe when you're running back to the boss after having Having to do a mechanic. This can buy you a little bit of safety and a little bit of freedom when you know some damage is coming in and you don't have any way to leech life back just yet. The more enemies that are around you when you use the shield, the bigger the shield is going to be as it's increased by 18% for each enemy nearby. The second ability on the front bar is going to be puncturing sweeps. Puncturing Sweeps is the heart and the soul of the Magicka Templar. It is just amazing. It's an AoE ability that reduces the move speed of the enemy that it hits by 40%. It's also going to hit all the enemies around that enemy, and 40% of the damage that you do with this ability is going to be returned to you as health, which means as long as you're using this ability on your enemies, it's very, very hard, if not almost impossible, for your character to die when it's set up appropriately. So when you find yourself in the thick of danger in battle, make sure that one thing that you're thinking thinking about doing is keep on sweeping, keep on puncturing. As long as these sweeps keep going, it's going to be really hard for you to die. This is going to be your spammable that you're going to use anytime all your dots are ticking and all your buffs are up. The third ability on the front bar is going to be Radiant Glory. Radiant Glory is our execute, which means we're going to use this skill anytime the enemies drop below 25%. As soon as they get to 25% or below, we're going to use this ability. This ability is fantastic. It's one of the most fun executes in the game. It basically is like a beam of fire connecting from your hand to the enemy. A lot, a lot of people in the community call it a Jesus beam. It just does a huge amount of damage. The lower the health of the enemy, the more damage it's going to do, and it's healing you for 20% of the damage inflicted. So once again, you doing damage to the enemy causes you to be healed. Not a lot of classes have skills like that, but the Templar is fortunate enough to have both its spammable and its execute bringing life back in on top of the Ring of the Pell Order if you're running it, which makes it so hard for this character to die. Now the fourth ability on the front bar, Channeled Acceleration. Channeled Acceleration is doing quite a few things for you here. One, it's just got a passive ability to it. Anytime you block on the front bar, you get a 5,000 damage shield just for blocking because this ability is slotted. So a little bubble will pop up around your character and that thing will absorb the first 5,000 damage you take while you're blocking as long as this ability is slotted. And it does have a cooldown, but more often than not, when you need it, it's going to be available. Also, when you use this ability, it's going to give you major expedition for 
12 seconds. Usually you get major expedition for maybe four seconds at a time from a buff. This skill is going to give it to you for 12 seconds. And what that means is you're going to move 30% faster for those 12 seconds. It's also going to give you minor force for 36 seconds. That is a really long time to get a critical damage buff of 10%, 36 seconds. So you get to cast this ability and then forget about it for a very long time in battle, which is always nice. It helps to simplify the rotation when you have some abilities that have longer durations and you don't need the expedition, right? So while the major expedition is only lasting 12 seconds, the important buff here is the 36 second minor force or critical damage buff. So you only recast this every 36 seconds as long as you're in battle. And then when you're running from one place to the next, you can go ahead and try to keep the major expedition up so that your character's moving 30% uh, faster when you're moving from A to B. The fifth ability on the front bar is going to be inner light. I love this ability because again, it simplifies your rotation. It makes the build a lot more approachable for new players without making it worse for veterans. This ability here is not really something you're ever going to use outside of PvP. And if you take it into PvP, then you can use this ability to expose stealth players that are nearby. But in PvE content, you don't ever need to expose stealth enemies nearby. So you don't use this ability. It's just going to make your build stronger. Just by being on this bar, it's going to buff your character. While slotted, you're going to get major savagery, increasing your weapon and spell critical rating by 2,600. And your max magicka is also going to increase by 5%. This is really important because not only is it increasing your crit chance, but it's also increasing your magic pool. And because your damage is in part based on the size of your magic pool, right? Every 1000 magic that you have is going to add up to another 100 spell damage right? That's the approximate formula. So 5% extra magicka means you're going to get extra spell damage that is calculated into the damage of all of your abilities anytime you're on this bar. Not only that, there are some mages guild passives that are going to further increase your magicka recovery and the size of your magicka pool just for having this ability slotted. So this ability is just one massive bar buffer just for having it slotted. It's giving you so, so much and you never have to touch it. So it really helps to simplify the rotation of the character and the place of the character when you have an ability like this that's just buffing passively. So it really helps to have bar buffers like this on a build. It simplifies the rotation without making it weaker. And that just makes it easier for everyone to play. The final ability on the front bar is going to be the ultimate. This is Flawless Dawnbreaker. Again, this is an ability we're not really going to be using. We're slotting it because when it's slotted, it's buffing the entire front bar. You can use it if you want to, because it's a very cheap ultimate at only 118 ultimate. This is kind of a two part ultimate. Anytime you use it, it's going to do a massive amount of damage. And then also it's going to buff you for 20 seconds, giving you an extra 300 spell damage for that 20 seconds. So it's kind of like uh, a burst of damage and then also a buff. So you're stronger for the next 20 seconds after you use it. It's a great ability. And anytime it's slotted, it's making the whole bar do more damage because of the fighter's guild passive that we'll touch on later, which is just going to basically increase your spell damage on this entire bar. Next, we have the first ability on the back bar, unstable wall of fire, the staple of a magical build. It's really hard to get away from this in a really solid magic build because it pairs so well with the Maelstrom Staff, and it's just such a great ability. It's a massive rectangle of fire damage in front of your character, and it is huge. Not only is it huge, it's doing a ton of damage, and then the end of its duration, it lasts 10 seconds, and at the end, it explodes, dealing 6,200 additional damage, right? And all these numbers are on buff that you're looking at, but it explodes doing additional damage. So if you can help it, you want to be on your front bar when this ability explodes, and then as soon as it explodes, you come back to the back bar and you reapply it. But if you're on the front bar when it explodes it's going to actually explode for quite a bit more damage so it's one of those abilities you want to be on the front bar when it expires but then as soon as it expires you want to switch back here and then start replacing all of your back bar abilities and that's going to be one of the things about this build that's really nice it's a the rotation is going to be kind of dynamic and what that means is you're going to have to occasionally cast spells that fall off but it's also going to be a very static rotation for the most part which means you're going to be casting your skills in a pretty predictable order and I'll show you why. So Unstable Wall of Fire, Blazing Spear, Solar Barrage, and Razor Caltrops all have a 10 second duration, which means when you come back here to replace Unstable Wall of Fire, it's also time to replace the next three abilities because they're about to fall off or they are falling off as you come back here. So anytime you come back to the back bar, you can go ahead and replace all of them, all four of those abilities. Next up, we have Blazing Spear. Blazing Spear has three parts to it. The first thing is when you use it, if you have 
allies in your party, they can synergize with it. They can press X or whatever the button is on console. They can synergize with it and grab it. And when they grab it, they're going to get resources back for grabbing it, right? Whether it's your tank, your healer or another DPS, they get resources back. So your allies are going to love that you're throwing this skill, but it's not just great for them. It's fantastic for you. It's also going to do a ton of damage. As soon as the skill hits the ground, it's going to explode doing damage to the enemies around it. Then it's also going to leave a dot on the ground in the area for 10 seconds, doing damage over time to all the enemies in the area. So it hits the ground, does a burst of damage, and then does damage over time for the next 10 seconds. Great ability while also helping your allies. It's just one of those abilities that you really never put a Templar build together without including. Next, we have Solar Barrage. Solar Barrage is going to be a nice AoE damage ability that you cast, and then your character is basically going to explode with light after you cast it, doing damage to all enemies around you for 10 seconds. While this ability is active, you're also buffed. You gain Empower, which means that your character's light attacks are going to be doing 40% more damage for the duration. So for the next 10 seconds, or basically anytime this ability is on, your light attacks do 40% extra damage, which is very nice. The next ability on the back bar is going to be Razor Caltrops. Razor Caltrops is one of those abilities that used to be really, really good on stamina tunes, but mag tunes weren't really using it because it didn't scale well with magicka builds. Then Zoss changed all that. Now this ability does scale off your highest stat, just like pretty much everything in the game now. And what this means is it's now a great ability on magicka tunes. It's going to be a great dot, right? This is another ability that has multiple functions to it. It's going to be a really large AOE dot. Then it's also going to slow the enemies stuck inside of it by 50%, which is huge. That's going to be very convenient when you're fighting lots of things at once. It makes it very easy to kind of move just a little bit, get out of the way of their light attacks, and it's really cut down the amount of damage that's coming in on you while you're still unloading on them. And it's also going to apply major breach to them, reducing their resistances by 6,000, which means everything that you do to the enemies that are standing in your Razor Caltrops is going to do significantly more damage to the enemy because they have major breach on them now. So it's a dot, it's a slow, and it's a debuff. It's basically doing everything you could ask an ability to do. It's great. Next, we have Channeled Focus. Channeled Focus is a buff. You put this rune on the ground and you don't have to stand in it or anything like that. You just put it on the ground and then it's going to give you major resolve for 25 seconds, which increases your resistances by 6,000. This is basically the inverse of the debuff that Razor Caltrops puts out. This reduces the enemy's resistance by 6,000. This increases your resistance by 6,000, which means you're going to take significantly less damage as long as this rune is on the floor. If you're ever fighting and it feels like all of a sudden you're taking way more damage, it's probably because your channeled focus dropped and you need to put it on the ground again. But that's not the only thing this skill does that's amazing. It also is going to give you 242 Magicka every second that it's down, which is going to be fantastic for your sustain. It's going to be one of the reasons your sustain is so good on this character. And what I mean by sustain is it's really hard to run out of Magicka. Once you have all of these skills going, once you have your passives invested, once you have your champion points spec, right, this build will never run out of Magicka on you. If you're running out of Magicka when you first start playing the build, it's likely because you're still missing some passives or maybe some champion points, or maybe you're over casting some of these dots too often, right? And you're burning through your mana because you're reapplying dots before it's time. Now, you don't have to stand in the rune to get those two effects, but if you do stand in the rune, you do get healed for 885 health every one second. So it does provide you a little bit of extra healing. In the grand scheme of things, 885 health per second is basically nothing on this character because you're going to have thousands and thousands of health coming in every second from your Ring of the Pell Order, from your sweeps, from your Radiant Glory, right? From all of your dots going, all those things are going to be bringing health because of Ring of the Pell Order if you're wearing you're just going to have thousands and thousands of health coming in, but you know, 800 more health for standing in the ring is going to be nice. But whatever you do, don't die standing in the ring because once again, that 800 health, it's nice, but it's not that significant. And then finally, Fiery Rage, the back bar ultimate. This ability hits so hard. There's few things more satisfying than dropping Fiery Rage on a large pack of enemies or a boss in Elder Scrolls Online. This ability does a ton of damage, but it's also quite expensive at 237 ultimate. One of the great things about Fiery Rage is that it's also buffed by our deadly that we're wearing, right? Which is increasing the damage of damage over time abilities like this. So its damage is further catapulted into obscene levels by the fact that we're wearing the deadly set on this character, just making Fiery Rage even more fun to use on this character than it normally is. All right, as for the rotation, what you're going to do is cast your channeled acceleration first on the front bar, then go to the back bar and put down your rune. Then you're going to put down the four back bar dots. 
all four of those. Then you're going to do puncturing sweeps until the back bar explodes that first wall of elements. And you're going to go back and replace the four dots again. And then you're going to go back to sweeping. And that is the rotation. Other than that, you're going to dynamically replace channeled acceleration and channeled focus whenever they fall off. All that means is that it's not going to be a static rotation. Uh, it's just when it falls off, replace it. Same thing with channeled focus. You'll just replace one of your jabs with your channeled acceleration when it falls off. You'll replace one of your jabs with a channeled focus when it falls off. But more or less, you're going to be casting these four dots together every time. And that's going to make your rotation very, very simple. It's basically just these four dots and then your sweeps. And then when the enemy gets below 25% health, you're going to switch to Radiant Glory instead of Puncturing Sweep. Go ahead and mix your Radiant Ward in anytime you're taking damage, but you're unable to be attacking the enemy. So you need that that shield to keep yourself alive until you can start doing damage and start leeching life back. And then your back bar ultimate fiery rage is going to be the one you're going to want to use. This is going to be your mega damage dealer. Drop this on large groups of enemies or thick bosses anytime you want to do tons of damage. And that is the rotation for the Magic of Templar. Very easy, very straightforward. Once you do it a couple times, you'll really feel how easy and intuitive this rotation is. As for your passives, we're going to be grabbing Piercing Spear. This is going to increase your critical damage by 10% and increase your damage done to blocking targets by 10%, which is going to give you minor protection for 6 seconds, reducing damage taken by 5%. Anytime you activate one of these abilities, which, you know, because of Puncturing Sweeps being your spammable, you'll always be activating that minor protection. Uh, we're also going to be grabbing Burning Light, which says every time you use a Adric Spear ability four times in rapid succession, you'll deal extra damage to that enemy. 5,000, 6,000 damage or so. This is going to be a huge source of passive damage that you're going to get just because you're using Puncturing Sweeps as your spammable. And next, we're going to be grabbing Balance Warrior, which is going to increase our weapon and spell damage by 6% and our spell resistance by 13, 20. It's just a nice buff that's always on. It's there. It's great. It's easy. Next, we have the Dawn's Wrath line. We're going to grab Prism because this is going to give us ult back anytime we're using a Dawn's Wrath ability. And we're going to grab Illuminate because casting a Dawn's Wrath ability will grant minor sorcery to you and your group for 20 seconds, increasing your spell damage by 10%. And finally, we're going to grab Restoring Spirit, which is going to reduce the health, magic, stamina, and ultimate cost of our abilities by 5%. It's just good for our sustain. And from the Restoring Light line, we're going to grab Sacred Ground. This is going to make it so that when you stand in your channel focus rune for four seconds after leaving, you get increased heals. And it's also going to increase the amount of damage you can block by 10% for that duration. Also, we're going to grab Master Ritualist, which increases your resurrection speed by 20%. If you're playing with someone else, they will also revive with 100% more health. In the Dual Wield line, you're going to be grabbing Dual Wield Expert and Ruffian and Twin Blades. This is going to increase your spell damage. It's going to give you increased damage against stunned, immobilized, disoriented, or silenced enemies, which means when you use your toppling charge to close the gap on an enemy, you're also going to be doing 16% more damage to them thanks to Ruffian. And finally, Twin Blade, which because we're using dual daggers is going to greatly increase our critical chance on the character. On the back bar, we're using a destruction staff, so we're going to grab all of the destruction staff passives. We are wearing mostly light armor, so we're going to grab all of the light armor passives, but we are wearing a couple of medium armor pieces. So we're going to grab dexterity, which is going to increase our critical damage. And we're going to grab agility because it's going to increase our spell damage. So crit damage and spell damage increase. It's great for our character. If you have fighter's guild or mage's guild abilities slotted, then make sure to grab the fighter's guild or mage's guild passives. We have a mage's guild ability on this build, so make sure to grab those mage's guild passives. In the Undaunted, make sure to grab both passives. These are going to increase your sustain and your resource pool sizes. So you'll have more health, magicka, and stamina, and then you'll also get the resources back anytime you grab a synergy. Under Assault, you're going to grab a Continuous Attack. This is going to increase your move speed by 30% all the time, anytime that you're on a mount. So you get on a mount, you're moving 30% faster because of this passive. You only have to put one point in it. Putting a second point in it does nothing for you. Next, we're going to grab all of our Racial Passives. This character is a Breton for increased sustain, but it doesn't matter what race you are, the Racial Passives are always useful, or at least worth getting because they're there, and they're usually fairly substantial, even if your race isn't perfect for the role you're playing. And finally, last but not least, we're going to grab Medicinal Use Level 3. Go ahead and grab this. It's going to make it so that your potions last as long as the cooldown. As for the champion points, I'm going to go ahead and put a link to the written guide down in the description below so that you can read them off there. I think that's going to be a lot easier to follow than if I'm rattling them off to you here. So be sure to click on the written guide down below for the champion point loadout.
All right, guys, and that is it. Please, please, if you found this video helpful, be sure to like and to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And feel free to leave a comment down below with any questions. I try to answer all of them or just to help me with social engagement here on YouTube for that sweet, sweet algorithm. If you ever want to hang out with someone else who loves this game, be sure to swing by my stream over at twitch.tv slash lucky ghost. That link will be in the description as well. I hope you have a fantastic day, night or evening, wherever you might be, and I'll see you in the next video.